kwetsbare delen. U ziet die uh, puntjes daar uitsteken. En als je daar dan tegen de vlakte gaat, krijgt die fiets daar een tik. Maar dat is makkelijk te herstellen door weer even te tikken. Postuma zegt nu zelf de elegantie zelf. Dat is een laadbloeier. Terug. Dat is in de Gers tussen Toulouse en Bordeaux. Verstrepen uit Eindhout. Mathé Pronk en Oleke Frank. En weer een val hier. Iemand van Koffietis. Een Rabobanker wat opgehouden. Die van Koffietis daar toch wel een beetje te onstuimig binnen kan bocht.
Gelijk met Heimen. Die lange van Rabobank. Of Aurelio. En dit is Minar. Wat jeugdig, wat overmoedig. En daar toch wel duidelijk in de fout. Mark Wouters heeft vorig jaar zoals een kans in rook zien opgaan. Hè? Door een manoeuvre van Bram Tankink. Was daar heel kwaad voor Mark Wouters. En Bram heeft zich al uitvoerig verontschuldigd. Bijna elke keer als hij Wouters ziet, dan verontschuldigt hij zich nog eens. Ik zie het Bram zo doen. Daar nog eens, Minaar. Weet niet wat hem bezielt. Ik wil de bocht gewoon te kort aansnijden en een paar plekken winnen. Maar op deze plek in het peloton maak je toch niet zoveel goed. Van opleiding Pistier, die minaar. Misschien vandaar. Dit kan ik beter dan mijn collega's. Laten we het maar eens proberen. Ze zien er toch al getekend uit. En dat heeft met die snelle aanvangsuren te maken. We gaan hier weer lijken krijgen. Deze portaal komt uit. rijden of lossen. En twee dingen die je wel moet doen. Eten en energie sparen. Hier en... wordt gewacht op Tor Hussoft. Tor weer met een probleem gezeten. here of Paris-Roubaix. They are now entering the five-star section of the Forest of Arlenberg with a lead of 53 seconds over the whole main pack of riders here. George Hincapie has moved up to the front. So too Leif Hoster, Tom Bonin. This is going to be a real battle of the stars now over this new stretch of cobblestones. We'll see how they might manage to ride it now. Well, it might be a new section of cobblestones, but you look at the way those bikes are bouncing around all over the place. They've managed to keep the barriers and the crowd away to make it as safe as possible for these bike riders. But just look how difficult this section is. 2.4 kilometers long. They go slightly downhill, and look how fast the main field is going. And, and Tom Bonin is on the front. It's Tom Bonin driving Hincapi right behind him. The big two men are firing on the cobbles in the forest here. All of the white that's coming off is, in fact, the silver sand they used to hold the cobbles together. The riders were complaining that the wheels were sticking in it. Well, now we're going to find out just by how much, because they're going to have to ride down the breakaway. Hincapi and Bonin one on one. One on one, Tom Bonin is one of the biggest specialists in the world now, Phil, at the Cobblestone Classics. He's looking to win this again. Look at the way he's picking his way over the Cobblestones, but right on his wheel is Hincapi. Stephen Weisemann is not too far away either, and I don't believe that Van Pettigam is far away from them either. Well, they know just the importance of being on the front here because they know riders will be falling behind them on these cobblestones and they're going to have to drive. Steffen Schreck is setting the pace for T-Mobile, but these are the leading four riders now in the gunning sights of the pack. The pack is being led by Tom Bolan. Hincapi's read it perfectly. Suddenly he appears to take the wheel of the world champion. 
Well, this is a very difficult section of cobblestones. The leading group of four now down to three, but there is the main field. Nobody's down yet. Everybody is still riding nice and safely at the front end of the main field, but it looks as if somebody else has taken over the pacemaking because this looks like Cancellara. Well, he's also a man tipped. He was ranked amongst the second favourites to win this race, the Swiss rider Fabian Cancellara. He's riding well as he's got over the front. Bonin looks across there at George Hincapie. Hincapie's got everything under control, leading the race just behind the CSC rider here. But cast your eyes to the back of the race because that's where it is really not the place to be. Riders dodging and diving in every direction. Well, you see the big riders are riding right down the cobblestone section in the middle. That's actually, believe it or not, the safest part of the race to be. Hincapi has taken the responsibility there of chasing down Cancellara, and he's put, in fact, Tom Boonen into second place. These are the three leaders. They will go off the cobblestones probably in first, second and third place, but not by very much at all. And the only man they will have left behind is the grand old 40-year-old Dmitry Konishev, the oldest man in this race as he continues to go back into the peloton the other three push on to exit the forest of arnenberg and they're in a very good position now to join the head of the peloton because this will be a reshape here well this is a big reshape it's the most important part of paris roubaix for me because this is where you can have serious bad luck and if you had bad luck here or a flat tire you can come out of the forest of arnenberg two and a half minutes behind everybody else in the race Peter Van Pietigam riding very well right up to the front end of the main field, but George Hincapi Phil today demonstrating that he wants to win this race. Well, he's made it known he's fed up of finishing in the placings. Now he wants to finish and get the cobblestone for the sideboard at home for himself. That's what the winner gets, along with about 30,000 euro. As we're well, now looking here at the leaders of the race. Well, they're catching Postuma. There he is over to the right-hand side. Look at Boone, and he's just looking so relaxed in the cobblestones. He's the man there in the white jersey. Looks great as the world champion. Moving round up the outside as well. You can see the rider there from the Francais de Jeu. There's two riders in there from Team Discovery Channel, but this is really the first forming of the decanting of the stars. There's Van Piet again going through there, and Hincapi will be very happy. They've got two teammates in that group. 17 riders have gone off the cobbles in that group together. The rest are trying to repair the damage here. Look at the face of Baden Cup, third in line. He's not that far behind as he grimaces to come off these cobbles with the second group on the road. As we switch now to what is life at the back of the peloton on Paris Roubaix. Well, this is just a section of 2.4 kilometers, just inside of two miles of racing. And look at the damage. It seems like an awful long time since we saw George Hincap and his group go off the back. I just caught a quick glimpse there of Hervé Duclos La Salle. His dad won this race on two occasions. But that was Hervé right on the back and learning the hard way, as indeed his dad did in the old days too. Bradley Wiggins just going through there as well. He's at the back end of the bike race. This is a very excruciating part of the sport, trying to ride over these cobblestones. And you Ooh. see, once you lose your speed, you bump into every single stone on this road. That's poor old Kenny Van Hummel there of the Skill Shimano team. Lost a little bit of control at the back. The peloton now has split up here quite dramatically. These riders already, I think, are out of the hunt. There were 17 riders went off the end of the pave in pursuit of the handful of leaders. I think there were three went off the uh, front end first. We'll catch up them as soon as we can. These are static cameras here at the exit of the Forest of Arnberg. Now we move up on the mobile ones. The world champion, number one, Tom Bonin, taking stock now as the who is with him. Well, I think he hasn't lost any of the main worries of the race. Stefan Besserman is here, George Hincapie is here, and so too is Peter Van Pietigam. 111 there, Frédéric Guédon, a former winner of Paris-Roubaix himself. We've got all of the big leaders here. That's Florent Bra there, number 101. A little bit further up as we get a chance to see just exactly who's made the move. Stefan Schreck has survived there. He was in that breakaway this morning of four riders. Now he's managed to get into this leading group of 17. But all of the big names, Phil, have managed to make the junction. I don't really think anybody's missing. But there's a lot of the peloton missing, and that, of course, is why they go so fast. The men with the talent will out at the front, providing they put themselves in the right position, because meanwhile, life at the exit of the Forest of Arnenberg, it's over a minute and a half now back to these riders, maybe even a bit more.
get a chance now just to see why this Forest of Arenberg is so important in this race. Because you go in at the same time as everybody else and you go out of it two minutes in arrears. There's George Hincapie, third in line here. Now, when the picture goes still like that, it means the camera's correcting with the shake so you don't lose the image. But the cobbles of Paris-Roubaix, they claim every seat in the house here because this is a battle and you never know when your luck turns a corner because it can happen at any moment. There is Tom Bonin now. He's on his own and he's riding behind George Hincapie. The irony was it was Bonin's attack who actually went away and dropped his teammates. Uh, George Hincapie was right on the ball. He saw it was happening straight with him. There's the lineup of the breakaway for you now, and I do believe that from this leading group, and I think it's 14, the winner of Paris Roubaix will come, and Hincapie has got the perfect position at the moment. Well, Nicola Portel still surviving. This is Juan Antonio Fletcher on the front. He is a great rider. He's a strange rider from the, uh, the southern part of Europe. He's from Spain, and normally those riders don't like these kind of classics. But I think here this afternoon, he maybe will be thinking of getting the victory for Spain. This is the second group on the road. It looks very much like uh, the Australian, former Australian national champion, I should say, and that's Matty Wilson, I think, because you can see the bands on his shoulders there. He is riding on the front of this group for Baden Cook, but they are losing serious chunks of time. They're a minute and a half down as we return to the leading group of riders. It's the dark blue jerseys of Team Discovery Channel putting a little bit of pressure on. This is sector number 13 to go of Cobblestones. 2.4 kilometers in length. This is a Tillois, Assa, and Rosier. When the riders come out of this section, they've got around about 10 kilometers of fairly smooth road to recuperate a certain amount, but then they start to go again into the cobblestones of Orshi. But this section is very difficult. We're looking to the dust here at Paris Roubaix now. 13 sectors of cobblestones. This is sector 13. The breakaway of 14 riders is making progress. Discovery Channel have three riders in the group. Also here are two from the CSC team, including Lars Mikkelsen. The other one is Fabian Cancellara. Frederick Gedon is here. This is a very select group. So many good riders, so many teams. Look at Leif Hosler. He's being marked by Tom Bone, and we could be looking at last weekend's Tour de Flanders here because these were the two men who went to the finish together. Except when we pull back with the cameras, there are a lot more than two men. There are, in fact, 14 all big names as well. Life Hoster, I think, this afternoon is dedicating himself to George Hincapie. The team have told us, Phil, over the last week, whenever we've gone to see them, that Hincapie has got the best form of his career. He has the form to win Paris-Roubaix. He has the dedication to win Paris-Roubaix. And I think since he won a stage in the Tour de France up to the summit of the Plata Day, it's changed his mentality a little bit. It's reminded him that he is a winner. Well, he's got to be feeling now as though this is going to be his best opportunity to win this race. If he is ever to win Paris Roubaix, surely it has got to be. What you say, Paul, on keeping the pace high. They don't want that group to come back. They don't want the teammates of Boonen to get up here. And where this man is finding the strength from to hang on to the back, hats off to Nicola Portal, who's been away since about the 60th kilometre and we're just about 70 from the finish. Well, he's taking a few risks there to stay in contact, but I'll tell you, Nicola, from experience here, if you can get off this section of cobblestones, you've got about 10 kilometres, so you can have a good ride at the back of the group and try and recuperate a fraction. There's a different name on the front now going round the corner there. It looks like Lars Mikkelsen. He will be trying to set this race up for Fabian Cancellara, his teammate. And I have to say, Team CSC, Phil, could be doing with a little bit... Clara, Discovery Channel, but Discovery Channel aren't letting it affect their performances. They have been coming through big time. Remember, they lost Hammond and also Michael Barry. 
in crashes in the Tour de Flanders. Hammond has made sure he was here. He insisted all week he would ride this event. And the team was sort of saying, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for George Hincapi. Hincapi's in this group. He's just on the wheel there. You can see of Tom Bonin. He's going to keep a very close eye on Bonin. Mikkelsen is the man on the front for CSC, followed there by Juan Antonio Fletcher, followed by the world champion Tom Bonin, the winner last week of the Tour of Flanders, trying to win back-to-back -back Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix for the second time. But here, tactically, he's in a very precarious situation because in this group, he's completely and utterly on his own. He's got to think very carefully his tactics today, and if he does win from a group like this, then he is a man above men, because it's going to be very difficult for Tom Bonin to control the attacks from so many different directions. Lars Mikkelsen, for example, yes, he's 37 years of age now, but he loves Paris-Roubaix. He's won gent go in the past, but more importantly, he's twice finished fifth. Hey, Kevin. Zabel, Hammond, Fossati. This is a serious move a long way from the finish of Paris-Roubaix, just like it was a week ago in the Ronde van Vlaanderen in Belgium, not too far away from here. That's Guedon on the front. He must be thinking this is a great chance. It was a surprise win for him in Paris-Roubaix a couple of years ago. Now he's riding like a very experienced professional. Life Hoster at the front. He's a great bike rider to have as a teammate. In fact, he was the man who just recently won the three days of La Pana for his team. And that was after a very good win in the individual time. <laughs> to see that Team Discovery Channel this time are in superiority in numbers. Number 11, that's Hincapi. 61, Van Petegem. Number one, Tom Bonin. 121 just in front of him, Stefan Weissermann. He told me this morning he didn't think he had the form to ride well in Paris-Roubaix. He'd been on antibiotics after a slight illness. But I tell you what, when you love this race, you can find a little bit of extra motivation. There's Bonin. Keeping himself topped up with energy. Oh. Doesn't look like a man under pressure. He looks like <laughs> a man who's relaxed and enjoying his bike race here this afternoon because he is still, even though... <laughs> trying to pull it all back together for Baden Cook. 67 kilometers remains of the 2006 Paris-Roubaix. It's been a great race so far. All it's done, though, is project all of the race favourites into one group. And they're going to have to think, how are they going to outwit the other now that there's only 14 of them together here? We're making our way slowly but surely. Well, not so slowly, actually. Right. On sector number 12. Tom Bonin. Looking calm and collected now. He knows he's in a little bit of difficulty, but he needs to ride sensibly. There is the former German rider, Stefan Weissermann, who's now switched his nationality across to become a Swiss rider. This is Stegmans. He will be an ally for Peter van Pietigem down towards the end. It's amazing that there's so many teams have got multiple riders in this group, and the team that we've regarded as being the number one team in the world, Team Quickstep, have been really caught out here this afternoon. 
can't really understand how they got caught out quite so badly as they did. I would have expected Filippo Pizzato at least to have moved across. He, have, he must have known that uh, Bonham would have attacked there, but clearly he didn't read it right and he's back in the group. But the Italians often don't like riding on this road. The Italians have won this race uh, on 11 occasions out of a possible 104. Well, the country that's dominated with... It. And the reason he's yo-yoing, it is Juan Antonio Fletcher who's decided to go for gold here, 52 to go. First big question for Tom Bonin to answer. Well, he's going to have to react to this one because this man finished third in Paris-Roubaix last year and this is a very good move, it's a long way from the finish, but maybe that's the moment when you have to take the risk. Bonin has reacted though, he's seen the danger and said, right guys, oh. no messing about for me. What a powerhouse he is, the way he's ripped off from the front of that breakaway. Tom Bonin looks over his shoulder and just tries to reach Juan Antonio Fletcher. Now, this is the best answer, is to go away with one guy and then the others have got to rethink. But there's the reaction, and it looks as though it's going to come back. Well, it looks as if it's going to come back, but that was a very good move. But did you see how easy Tom Bonin was there when he accelerated, came straight away across that gap? He hasn't quite got to the wheel yet, and Juan Antonio Fletcher is not going to give up. Portal, despite the acceleration, still seems to be hanging on at the back of that group. I don't know how he's doing it. Here's Juan Antonio Fletcher. But one man who was badly placed a few moments ago was George Hincapie, who was sitting just in front of Portal. That wasn't the place to be when this acceleration was happening. You can't afford to drop away from the leaderboard when you're on the cobblestones. You never know when they might get up and bite you. Now we're looking at Fletcher. Now we're looking at Bone and just tagging on the back there. I think it's Lars Mikkelsen who's come across. It be Kentilara, but they've got themselves a gap there. Now, this is a scary moment for George Hincapie. You can see the blue jerseys. That's Gusev on the front. He's decided to lift up the pace and try and nail them all back together for Hincapie. Well, this is fine pacemaking here. As they try to stamp the message on the on the cobblestones, uh, Portal still yo-yos at the back, but Stefan Vesseman's also in trouble. I thought it was the mauve jersey of T-Mobile unhooked at the back here. And the rest are going across, so that could be the first shakeout taking place now. Frédéric Guédon also in difficulty there from the Francaise de Jeu. This is a bit strange, Phil, because a few moments ago, Stefan Weissermann is the man who actually lifted the pace at the front of that group to put the pressure on everybody. But let's not forget Stefan Weissermann came into this race a little bit under weather because he, in fact, has been on antibiotics for about 10 days after Milan San Remo, and that can really make a mess of the body. Gert Stegman's here now setting the pace, getting it back into a little bit of a reorganised breakaway. We'll see what happens when they come off the cobbles and see if they can push home the advantage. Bonin checking out who's cursed, survived the chase. Cancellara off to the right of our picture. Bonin finding all these boys still willing to work with him. And despite the way he answered that attack, this is Van Pietigam here, also caught at the back end. Well, you've got to react, you've got to get yourself straight back. This is Stegman's number 64 about to make the junction as well. well I thought it was Van Piedingham. It must be Van Piedingham has made the split then up at the front there. That was an incredible chase there by Bonin, and uh, he's called, well, at least the boys know now uh, just how strong he's feeling today. Well, that was a, the only way really for him to react in a group like this, so wait and see how dangerous it was. Still three riders from Discovery Channel. Hincapi, I thought, a little bit too far back, although he may well be feeling very confident in a situation like this. Covering the move. There you can see Stefan Weissermann just recuperating. There was Lars Mikkelsen coming back into the group. Well, they'll all get back together again with the exception of Portal. There's only 13 guys once more at the front here now. Fletcher, the man that caused the problem. At the end of the day, he's found, uh, he's highlighted one or two lacking... Uh, but other than that, they've got themselves back into the game. And the only one missing at the moment, 107, Nicola Portal. Well, coming off that section of cobblestones, they're going to bond it to every acceleration so far. If these guys want to win the race here this afternoon, they've got to get rid of that oh, man. Oh, what happened? Well, I don't know what happened there, but he seemed to start to ride no-handed. And then Incapi. George, yes, it's Incapi. George went down, I, and I don't know what happened there. He came off the corner. He appeared almost to be riding without his hands on the handlebars, and that was a heavy fall, and it doesn't look at all good. Well, this is an absolute tragedy for Discovery Channel. They've had nothing uh, but injuries this year. They seem to have found their way out with good results as well. 
but George Hincapie. But that's just, he's halfway down the pack. He seems to have, which his handlebars snapped. His handlebars snapped. They're going to have to try and find a, a bike for him. And George is stuck at the side of the road. And the car, look at his handlebars. They just snapped off there. He's gone straight over the top. Very oh. hard indeed. That is bad news for George Hincapie. There's the team car up alongside him. Johan Brunil is there. The bike has snapped. That is very, very sad. It looks to be his extension has snapped off. The bar seemed OK. Well, there's no answer to that. He went down, and it was a terrible shot because he wouldn't have expected to fall. His hitters, but they haven't got the man they wanted. George Hincapi has gone out after a very tragic mechanical incident. Well, uh, and they've got to get on with the race. They've got to rethink it, and if they're going to win it now, it's with Leif Hoster because Bonin has seen to no fault of anybody except it seems the bicycle he's lost his biggest rival there in Hincapi and the Cancellara drives on now look at the way this breakaway is splitting Hincapi out of it sitting on the roadside about a kilometre behind them now this is a move now for the big ones, and this is Cancellara. Tom Bonin drives. Watch Cancellara come round this corner here. He starts to accelerate, and all of a sudden his foot comes out. There's a little slip. He recovers beautifully to get back into the race, but Tom Bonin has seen this as a very good opportunity to split the race apart, and they've not got rid of Peter Van Pietergen because no. he's there in third place. And nor the sprinter, Alessandro Balan of Lamprey, and those four trying to get clear of the other four now because dropped his... Uh, uh, Isil has also gone off the back. Well, what an amazing thing. Inside, 50 kilometres from the finish. Everything going the way for George Hincapi today. And then a snapping of the extension on his bicycle. No warning at all. Down he goes, head on the floor. And Hincapi appears to be out of Paris-Roubaix. The moves when he's needed to. And he's dominated on the cobblestones as well. Well, there's the face of Tom. He had a rough time in midweek in Ghent, where Wigham said he didn't feel at all like it. Uh, tried hard on the first circuit of the Kemmelberg. It wasn't there, so he fell to the back of the race and he rode home. Uh, well, he's had a rest since then, and now he's looking extremely strong again. He's ridden a great race. Flanders in Paris-Roubaix this year, he's already won the Tour of Flanders, and he's looking now like a man very likely to be the winner here as well, but this time he will win it with the world champion's jersey on his back, and look at the gaps he's starting to open. And there's trouble at the back right now because this is Balan who's had a problem and he was in the group away. And I think that is also Gusev. Yep, this is how and it happened. It was happened. Gusev who went down. He slipped and Ouch. Balan went right over the top. And look how Fletcher just managed to get underneath that bike. These are very slippery cobblestones. The funny thing about the cobblestones is when they're wet, they're horrendous. When they're dry, they're even just as slippy. Well, it's the dust that does it, and Gusev was beginning to falter a little bit there. Is he just maybe his wheel just got stuck in the middle of those cobblestones? That's quite a nasty fall for Balan, although he seems perfectly fine. And Fletcher dive for the left. He is an extraordinarily good bike handler for a Spanish cyclist. Yeah, Fletcher's a great bike rider. Now you can see this is Gusev trying to pull himself back into the race. Very sad. You know, the thing about the cobblestones is the surface of the cobblestones just seems to be so much harder when you go down. Solid granite stones they are, and they do not give anything when you fall onto them. Well, this will be uh, Fletcher trying to get... No, this is Balan trying to get back now. He's going to pedal back smoothly. Now, that's an indication, Paul. This guy has still got plenty of strength left. Well, the way he got up, he bounced off the ground and immediately was straight back up onto his bike. A little bit of a scratch, but that's what Paris Rebe is all about. You know, the stories are here all of the time. And straight to the front is Juan Antonio Fletcher. This man is fantastic. Yes, he is, and look at the way he's doing it now. I think that was possibly 25 kilometres to go. We've just seen on the side of the road there. This is Leif Hoster. I'm not sure whether Gusev will come back quite so smoothly. He was getting tired. I'm not sure whether that crashed. And, in fact, the first man to reach him is Cancellara. And Cancellara is a different kettle of fish. This is a man who could ride away with it. Well, Fabian Cancellara saw that as an opportunity. Gusev scrambling to get onto his wheel, but Tom Bonin is being caught out here. He was asking everybody else to lift the pacemaking. Peter Van Pittigem is on the front of that group, but the gap now is starting to open a fraction as Fabian Cancellara has done what he said he was going to do. He's done, but Phil, they've Ooh, slowed it down. They've slowed it down. This could be the curtains for them if they allow this to happen. And Gusev, a moment ago behind the race, 
could find himself in the winning move. Well, that is unbelievable. That's what Paris Roubaix is about. I've told you so many times. One minute you're up, one minute you're down. You must never give up in a race like this. It's about courage. This is a real man's race. Vladimir Gusev chased for about seven kilometers to come back to the group, launched a little scurry of a move off the front. He's been joined now by Fabian Cancellara. The man caught out is the world champion. He's a prisoner now in this group, Tom Bonin. Well, this had to happen. The riders had to throw their chances at Bonin. Bonin can't answer everyone. Now, this is the big effort by Fabian Cancellara. He's 25 years of age. He's won one race this year, but, boy, he is a winner. And he's a very strong rider. Remember him when he won the prologue in the Tour de France in Liège back in 2004. Now, as far as I can remember, his best finish in Paris-Roubaix, I think he was eighth. Uh, last year. Well, you know, he loves this race. He gave uh, CSC a good victory in Terreno Adriatico when he won himself the time trial. But as he comes off the cobblestones here, you can see that they're all starting to panic a little bit. Fabian Cancellara here, Phil, has certainly put the bit between his teeth and decided this is the moment to move. They've got a little bit of respite here, but only for about three kilometres because coming up next is the Pave de l'Abre. The cobblestones are blue. They are unbelievably slippy and they are very difficult towards the end because they climb up to the old cafe. Well, what a strong position to be in. In fact, as we see these riders getting onto that section, Five stars, it never ends here. Sector four, Paris-Roubaix, 17 kilometers to go. Fabian Cancellara, a Swiss rider, has never won this race since 1923. A Russian rider has never won this race. And the two of them now try to go clear of the field. And at this stage, Tom Bonin's going to say to the other guys, if you want to win, you better chase. Well, it's up to them to chase. Bonin is up there into third position, battling a little bit with Juan Antonio Fletcher. He wants to get onto the wheel there of Peter Van Pietergem. Balan doing a very good job on the front, lifting the pace. Look at the speed they're going round these corners. If you could actually see what this road looks like, you wouldn't believe the speed that these men are going over it. The dust is there, the crowd is there. This is Paris Roubaix in the finale. Fabian Cancellara has got a company here. He's got Vladimir Gusev of Discovery Channel, who we're expecting to see the win this afternoon of George Hincapi. That's not going to happen. Hincapi out with a very nasty mechanical incident. But this is the moment. If Tom Bonin wants to win, Phil, he's got to respond on the Pave de l'Arbre. If Tom Bonin wants to win, yes. And if Gusev wants to win, he's just got to sit there and hang because he's got no reason to work with Cancellara. At the moment, at least, remember, it was Cancellara who went up to the young Russian, who really went to the front to try and just ease the pace down a little bit because he only just returned after his crash, and he looked the weakest of the breakaway. It just shows you, you stick to your guns and your fortunes can change dramatically. Now, Peter Van Pietergum here, he wants to win this race. He knows now he's got to release any reserves he's got left in those legs. Otherwise, Fabian Cancellara, Vladimir Gusev are going to go, and they're going to go big, but that's the gap. The gap is there. Gusev is tired. He's got to try and hold him. This because is a this very is a hard section of cobbles here, Phil. It goes slightly up. Gusev hasn't been able to stay in the wheel, and Cancellara now is getting what he needs. A lone attack now. He's opened up the gap between himself and Vladimir Gusev, and, of course, Peter Van Pietergem knows how dangerous this point of the race is. He knows this race like the back of his hand. He's probably the most experienced rider in this leading group, and he will not give up. He can feel the chance. Fletcher is in difficulty. Bernard Eisel has disappeared. The race is splitting up. Well, on this stretch of Pave in years gone by, the big names of the sport have laid down their final card and gone to victory. You can name them. Johan Museo, Henny Kuyper, and uh, other riders who've tried. Enik van der Aarde, and now it looks as though Fabian Cancellara is going to fly the Swiss flag to the finish. Well, that's going to be a massive piece of history for Swiss cycling because they've had to wait an awful long time. He's got the gap now of around about 20 seconds over Gusev. All he can do now is get himself into the time trial mode, start to con concentrate, start to think about ticking out the pedal, try and remember the finale of this race from previous years. So we are heading into the last 15 kilometres of Paris-Roubaix. It certainly isn't a done deal yet, but Fabian Cancellara is dictating the race pattern. 
not much of a respite. You take the right-hand bend here. You go over the, the tarmac surface for about 100 meters or so. Then it's off to the left, and it's on the cobblestones again. And that is section number three to go to the finish. That's the section of cobblestones known as Grouzon. It's 1.1 kilometers in length. And look at this crowd that have turned out to see Paris. <laughs> Afternoon. Be careful, young man, because it's slippy in those corners. Second man on the road here, Vladimir Gusev. He really is riding up. And you know what? A couple of years ago, a 23-year-old by the name of Tom Boonen rode like this in Paris-Roubaix. Just looking at the face there of Gusev, I think he's very, very tired now, and he's almost on automatic pilot. While Fabian Cancellara now relies. <laughs> now Cancellara is still clear here but there has just been this enormous attack by Leif Hoster and I'm not sure that Bonin has had the answer still second on the road is the Russian Discovery Channel right <laughs> their big find there in Gusev and up ahead in that little group is Hoster, and the world champion is having to handle everybody. And now Fletcher's going for him. Well, Peter Van Petergem has seen the move here. <laughs> Also is trying to pull it all back together here, but the race is splitting up. Bonin, for the first time this year, Phil, is having a hard time. These are professional cyclists at the height of their career, doing what they do best, and they're all reaching the limits of their ability. The one that can suffer just a second or two longer could decide the day here. Now, Cancellara is best shaped. <laughs> These are his legs, and he's finished six in the Tour de Flanders this year. He was six in Ghent Wavelgum. He don't want to finish six in Paris Roubaix. He wants to become the first Swiss rider to win it since Henri Souter in 1923. That was an awful long time to go ago. It was an awful long wait for the Swiss. But you know what? This man may well be getting it here this afternoon. Boonen in difficulty here. The world champion wears number one, but he won't give up. He's a strong bike rider. He is very courageous indeed. He wants the race. He wants to win as the world champion, and he wants to win in style. But for the moment, it's not looking good for Boonen because he's a long way down on Fabian Cancellara. Leif Hoster now has joined his teammate, Vladimir Gusev, and they've got Van Pietergem in a discovery sandwich. Well, they've got to put this attack home now while they've got Bonin off the back then they're going to have to concern themselves with Van Pieterman but at the moment at least the three of them up, up. Then they've got about four kilometers to the last section of cobblestones which are not really very difficult because there's a good piece of tarmac down to either side of it and you can get a bit of respite but it's dangerous as you flick from left to right we saw Henny Kuiper come unstuck there a couple of years ago Cancellara now Phil has to concentrate think and just get himself into that zone where you just ride and don't think about anybody else chasing you so now it'll be the hardest time trial of his career if he's going to win at Paris-Roubaix because... Hey, come on! Bronze medalist in the World Time Trial Championship last year is now racing for first place in Paris-Roubaix. That's the constitution of the three chasers, Gusev, Hoster and Van Pietergem. 
and that's two to one. So the Discovery boys, it's in their favour. Well, Race Radio is giving me a time check of 10 seconds, but looking up from those riders, I couldn't see Fabian Cancellara. This is a phenomenal race here, Phil, because everybody is just scrambling, trying to make contact with the rider in front. You've got Fabian... <laughs> There's Gusep, Hoster and Van Pietegem. About 10 seconds further back, you've still got Balan. Then a 10 seconds further back, you've got Boonen and Fletcher. All scrambling, all just basically surviving down towards the end of this race. Well, we're charging through the streets, which are not very far away from the finish in Roubaix now, but we've still got cobblestones to come. And one by one, they've delivered uh, blows to Don Boonen. He hasn't been able to answer every attack, and this is the result when you don't have a team to help. You're going to take all the blows on the body yourself. He looked across there at Alessandro Balan and Juan Antonio. survival down towards the end but when you're in the lead like Fabian Cancellar you get that little bit of ounce of extra energy coming from the motivation of knowing I'm on my own I'm in with a chance and look at the gap 31 seconds but that's 31 seconds back to the group containing Tom Bonin halfway across that gap you've got two riders from Discovery Channel and all they want to do is make the junction here but can they do it I'm not too sure they've got the power I think Cancellara is the fittest of them all now He's a great individual time trial rider against the clock. He's won junior world titles. He got a bronze in the senior event. He knows how to ride alone, a race of truth against the watch. He's being chased by three very tired men. Well, they put a lot of work in those tired men early on to try and set the race up for George Hinkapi, especially Life Hoster and Vladimir Gusev. This is the next group on the road. They seem to be recovering. It's a very difficult part of the race here as well because the road... Well, he won't have time to think of anything, Fabian Cancellara. Now he's made his move. He's just going to go. It's going to be the longest two kilometers of his life. He's nosing away. 32 seconds to do the two Discovery riders and Van Petergum. Then almost a minute back to Tom Bowen. The barrier's down. Well, the rules say you've got to stop, but they haven't bothered with that. They've gone straight over at 10 k's to go. Well, at 10 k's to go, they didn't think about that. There was somebody there checking it. There's a referee there. The lights are flashing. They're stopping Tom Bonin, Juan Antonio Fletcher, and there is the train that's gone through. There's absolutely no way that these guys are going to come through now. The race is over for these three. The race now is going to be down to just four men. 
Well, when the rules state that if the crossing comes down, you have to stop, you lose the real time. There's no way around it at 10 kilometers to go, so that's cost them about 30 seconds. Well, that train went through very fast indeed, but for these men now, next time they get a time check, Phil, it's going to be around about the 1 minute and 30 seconds, but their morale must be broken with that incident. It has happened before in Paris-Roubaix, but it's not seen, not seen it for a couple of years. It's going to take the spirit out of the chase surely now. Uh, frankly, I don't think it made any difference. I think these had already lost the race today. Uh, beaten by an attacking race that they hit him one-on-one -on -one all of the time until he could not answer them all. And Bonin's now been consigned to a chasing group of three. <laughs> in the time gap now they've gone out to a minute and 12 seconds well it's 40 seconds back to the chasing group of three riders Vladimir Gusev, Leif Hoster and Peter van Petergem but they are not at all doing anything to dent this man's advantage look at his face every now and again he puts his head down that makes him just a little bit more aerodynamic he's a great individual time trialist he won't be worried at all about riding on his own and he's going to give team CSC Phil their biggest win of this season he's around about eight kilometers from the finish in the stadium there's a massive crowd now watching on a huge screen as he races towards us here in Roubaix. No Swiss rider has ever been this, in this powerful position since the great Henri Souter, also won, by the way, the Tour de Flanders, but not in the same year. And Cancellara now, there he goes under the last, uh, nearly the last, the second sector of Pave at Hem. But the next sector is nothing, it's down the street outside. <laughs> <laughs> to come up alongside he was absolutely panicking because he only had about a 30 40 second advantage which is what Cancellara has got right now if he has a mechanical incident this whole race will come back together but we don't want any more mechanical incidents we've had too many so far well, Discovery Channel took uh, two out of the three places in the Tour of Flanders a week ago. And uh, Van Pietergum was the man who was pushed into fourth place then. He'll have a little bit of a say in the sprint for second place, I'm sure of that. But I really do think now that those three are racing for second place. This man is firing and firing as hard as you can believe. And Fabian Cancellara is living through the greatest moment of his career. <laughs> and that's at 1.5 kilometers to go. But look at the way he's bouncing here. He's waiting for these cobbles to finish, and once he gets out, he'll have to just get his head around this. He's got around about a 45-second advantage over the chasers who really seem to be disappearing, and Tom Bonin's group is a long way further back now. And that face is one of agony, yes, but it's one in control of the situation. It is all coming out today for Fabian Cancellara. Fourth in Paris-Roubaix two years ago. He slipped back to only eighth uh, last time out. <laughs> the single day race of them all, and today has been one of the greatest races we've seen for a long time. It has been a brilliant race. It all started, as it very often does, with the Forest of Arenberg, bringing 15 riders, the big names of the sport, right to the very front of this bike race. Now we can see Tom Bonin trying to pull himself back. He won't give up. He's a brave bike rider, the world champion. You earn those bands as world champion. You wear them for a year, and so far he's shown them off to great perfection throughout the...
environment for him is going to feel like an absolute mountain at this stage of the game. That grimace almost looks like a smile as he knows this is a little piece of history for him and, of course, for Swiss cycling. Once he gets the Tory Suter in 1923, one kilometre to go to the line now. That'll include a lap and a half of the stadium. What a feeling this must be for Fabian Cancellara. It'll be his 26th win of his career, his second of this year. His last big win was the prologue when he beat Lance Armstrong in the prologue of the Tour de France down in Liège in Belgium back in 2004. These are the crowd outside the Velo Club de Roubaix. That's the clubhouse of the organising club of this great stadium. All but a couple of years, the race has always finished here. The crowd are on their feet now. You can probably hear them as he circles the velodrome. 1923, it was only Suter did this. Now it is Fabian Cancellara. The bell and still nobody else in the stadium as Cancellara goes alone past the bell and rides a lap of honour here at the 104th running of Paris-Roubaix. Once he gets round the back straight, he can freewheel. They can't lap him. That's definitely out of the question as Cancellara now can enjoy the moment. He's about to go past the stadium entry. Nobody has come in. He will finish before anybody else enters. Now's a moment of pleasure. Gone is the pain of a six and a half hour day. The cobblestones of the hell of the north. They suddenly have become his friends. He's adapted to Paris-Roubaix. He's conquered the queen and he's won the event. The Swiss cyclist, the first winner from Switzerland since 1923. He can't believe it, but boy, does he deserve it. Fabian Cancellara wins Paris-Roubaix. And look at that average speed today, 42.24 kilometres an hour for Cancellara. In miles, that's over 26 miles an hour. The other three, he goes in for the scrum now. The other three, you can't see, I can tell you, are on the stadium. There they are. And this is now the hard-working young Russian here, Vladimir Gusev, hoping that Leif Hoster will get something out of this for Discovery Channel. They've got third and fourth, but they want second at least. Poor George Hincapi. He looks so good today to no fault of his own on the cobblestones. They jumped up and bit him and snapped his extension and down and out he went. Then it was left to these two teammates here there to help him trying to salvage a big result for Discovery. Well, they've got a big result. It's a question of whether they can outwit Peter Van Petergum, who has won this race before and is a good, useful rider on the velodrome too. He takes them high onto the track, that'll test them. As they now come around, the other three are on. You'll see them pass through underneath our picture, I think, as these boys start the sprint. They're going to force Van Petergum to dive for the inside. There he goes. Have they got the strength to take him? I don't think so, as he winds it up. What did he look over his shoulder for? Because he's going to allow Hoster in. And that's what you don't do, as Hoster takes second. Van Petergum third. Gusev will be fourth. That's an extremely good run. So, second in Flanders, second in Roubaix for Leif Hoster. Discovery Channel, dare I say, but I'm sure Lance Armstrong is watching. They don't seem to miss you yet, Lance. They're riding pretty well this year. But there is Cancellata as we now see the next stage of the race. This will be the race for fifth place. And Tom Bonin, he's taking on Balan, but he's still got the proudness to win as a world champion. Fifth of Bonin, Balan will come sixth. There's not much better he could have done today. They were all against him. He had no help from anybody. And Antonio Fletcher, who rode such a brilliant race, finishes seventh in the end. A total chaos in the middle on the grass here in the velodrome. It's a total scrum down there. They could qualify for the French rugby team, I think, just now. That is Fabien Cancellara. They're trying to make some room for him to breathe, I think. Yeah. Fabien, it's been a very long time since Switzerland has won this race. We got to know you in the Tour de France when you won the prologue, but now this must be a very sweet moment for you and the team. Yeah, I think after 83 years, I think, it's the last winner of the Paru Bear from the Switzerland. And I think today we do the great work, I think, with, uh, with, the, full, with the full team, with the, the full staff. Uh, big thanks on, on everybody that uh, that helped me and uh, to help the team for for do the race. 
and uh, oh, I'm so happy. And uh, I spoke to your team manager, and he actually wanted you to attack a little bit later, but he said you were just too impatient to get the race over. Yeah, you have to, to do the race. <laughs> That's come because I see a lot of time that a lot of rider was not 100% or see uh, the mouse a lot of time open and uh, this is for me a signal that a lot of rider is, uh, is, uh, is tired and uh, I was th this was the moment to, to keep full gas and uh, to do a small time trial and uh, I come alone uh, in this big velodrome, in this big race. Uh, How did it feel when you actually finally came in through the gate and came onto the velodrome and the crowd were all behind you? <sighs> Just only in the last lap, uh, I was I was more relaxed uh, because I see what's happened in the last year when I was when I when when I come in the velodrome and uh, I happened to the last uh, the last round uh, to to take the time to to have more air for for feel uh, for feel the the big uh, emotion.